MG Rob back with you, and today we're back on the Jaguar E-Type, and we're going to put the brake servo in it. But before we do that, since the brake servo was pretty much completely full of brake fluid, and there had been brake fluid up into the vacuum lines, we're going to take out the vacuum chamber here to make sure that there's no brake fluid inside that and drain it if so, and then I got to clear out all the lines to get the fluid out of the lines too. So let's get going. So here's the vacuum chamber. It's up here bolted against the firewall inside the, the front cage here. Now I'm not 100% sure on this car if I can get it twisted and pulled out through here, but I think I can. I haven't actually taken one of these out of any type yet. But we'll find out here in just a minute. First of all, we want to get this loose, which these hoses can be a bit of a bear to get apart because they get stuck. And I don't think, I'm not sure it's ever been disconnected since the car was built. So, I just kind of get that thing to come work it loose. got some bolts here holding it to the firewall. And then of course there's Really tough to get one to one back here in the back. Oh. All right, now we got the bolts out. See if it can actually slide through here or not. Well, looks like if I didn't have the oil filter on there, I could probably get it out. And obviously it won't go through that way. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to take the oil filter off. Winning. Now, as part of the service on this, I had actually just changed the oil right before we found out that we needed to put the brake booster in there. And I haven't run it yet. So it wasn't full of oil, so not that big of a deal. And yay. Um, Looks like there is brake fluid in there. And either that's got to come off or our carb's got to come off. Either the panel here's got to come out or our carb's got to come off to actually get it out because these the mounting feet won't allow it to get by anything. Yay. All right, so I didn't have really high hopes that it was gonna come out that way, but I was hoping. At any rate, I got this out and got the cack and caster out and, oh yeah, it must have that much fluid in it. So the previous end of the car must have topped that, but topped that, that brake fluid, gosh, at least a half a dozen times before selling it to the current owner. So now we need to empty this out and clean all the lines. So this is how much fluid I drained out of that vacuum canister. We got a full 36, 32 ounces here and about another 26 here. 
So that's what, uh, about 50 something liters, 50 something ounces there. And if you're working off the metric system, that is that three quarters of a liter. So we're over a liter and a half. So yeah, it was sucking some fluid up in there. And as always, I will clean this up because I always leave everything, when I put it back together, cleaner than what it came apart pretty much. So I'll get that thing in here, get it all cleaned up, and we'll get it ready to put back in. All right, so I cleaned the canister up. Now that way I'm really gonna get this any cleaner than this is if I really just clean it up, strip it and paint it. And if I did that, it wouldn't look right under the rest of the engine compartment the way it is. So we're, this is as clean as it's gonna get for now. And I went, but while I was in there, I got in here and wiped all this stuff out and just cleaned the air, general area up a little bit. Now I'm ready to put this all back in. So now I got the canister in place, all the vacuum lines hooked up, and it's just ready to put the lower splash panel in and uh, we'll make move on to the other side. So now it's time to put these into there. Of course, this one here has to go in from the bottom. And we gotta get all the vacuum caps and stuff off of here. So it's gonna go in, feed in through the bottom here. these holes and there's only one way for it to go in there and then it's got this bracket here that also goes into we can put one bolt into there and then we gotta go inside there and put uh, the three nuts on the inside so next we're gonna be hooking up these brake lines here And then we got a vacuum line right here that goes on. And then once we get all this snugged up, then we're gonna get in here and we're gonna actually put the clutch master cylinder in. So the biggest reason we're gonna go ahead and do the clutch master now is because all these lines and everything kind of have to intertwine and work with each other and I want to get this in place now so I can work everything in. So we bring this on through the bottom. Make sure we get that in the hole. Now we'll have to go inside the car and make sure we're actually lining up to the pedal. It might have to move in and out a little bit. And then we'll put the nuts on here. You gotta do those first before you hook this line up because once you put this line in place, you can't swing a wrench. So now we got this line here that goes in from the upper master cylinder down to the brake booster. So we get that in there, get that tightened down. And then we can look at putting in the charcoal canister and the vacuum line. So now I got all of our splash shields in place and we do not want to forget to put our reservoir for the brakes in here first before we try to put the charcoal canister in because once that goes in, you really can't get to the clamp. So we put the bolt through there, hook up our vacuum line here, and then want to cross over to there. And um, then we can put our heat shielding in for our master cylinders. And we'll be ready to um, fill the system up and bleed everything out. <laughs> 